Hi everyone, my name is Lon. This tutorial will focus on switch statements in C Sharp. Right, let's make our way to the whiteboard, slowly. Okay, what is a switch statement and when do we use it? It is a selection statement and chooses a single switch section based on matching a pattern with a match expression. A switch statement is often used as an alternative to an if-else construct if a single expression is tested against three or more conditions. On the whiteboard is a flow diagram representing the logical flow of a switch statement. Right, let's create a code example. We are going to create a little quiz application. So let's first create a private static method. We use the static keyword so the main method can access the method without the need to instantiate an object from, in this case, the program class and we'll name the method question1. This method accepts one argument, which will be a string variable that points to data denoting the answer to question1. So this method returns an integer, which will contain a value denoting the user's score. The user's score will be calculated in this method based on the user's input in relation to the pattern match criteria. So let's define an integer variable named score and initialize its value to zero. This value will be returned by this method, so let's implement the code for this using the return statement. Note, the return statement terminates execution of the method in which it appears and returns control to the calling method. Let's then create the basic structure of our switch statement. So to implement our switch statement, we type switch followed by the match expression within brackets. This match expression is the answer provided by the user to a quiz question. The question for question 1 will be, which country has the highest population for wild tigers? So the first pattern match candidate denoting a switch section is the case testing India, which happens to be the correct answer to question 1. So if the user inputs India as the answer, we want to increment the user's score by 1. So we can implement the plus plus unary operator against the score integer variable for this purpose. We'll then simply output the text correct to the console screen. So let's pause and take a look at a few important points. The match expression, which is a string variable named answer, wrapped within the brackets in our switch statement is implementing the toUpper method. The toUpper method is a member of the string class, which means it is available on any variable defined as a string data type. The reason we are using the toUpper method is to force the user's input to contain only uppercase characters. We then have the control to eliminate case sensitivity by ensuring that all pattern match criteria are in uppercase. Uppercase characters have different Unicode values to their lowercase counterparts. So capital I will have a different Unicode character to lowercase i. Uppercase I has a Unicode decimal value of 73 and lowercase i has a Unicode decimal value of 105. So this means that if capital I is compared in code to lowercase i, these values will not be deemed as equal. So there is a requirement in this little application for the user's input to not be case sensitive. So then when we compare the match expression to a match pattern candidate, we ensure that the string literal containing the characters for the text India are all in uppercase. We are ensuring that we compare like for like. This will mean that, for example, if the user inputs the text India where a mix of uppercase and lowercase characters are inputted, that the characters are all forced to be uppercase characters before the comparison of the pattern match candidate is evaluated against the match expression. In effect, this can eliminate case sensitivity for all switch cases. It is important to note that each switch section contains one or more case labels, either a case or default label, followed by one or more statements. On the next line, after the case label, we can see the statements for the switch section. We can see the break jump statement following these statements. If we do not include an appropriate jump statement after the statement or statements implemented for a switch section, we will receive a compile time error. You'll see red squiggly lines under the offending case label, and if you put your mouse pointer over the red squiggly lines, an error message will be revealed, which will state something to this effect. Control cannot be forced through from one case statement to another. For our next case statement, let's say that we have a requirement 
where we wish to output specific text to the user if the user enters Malaysia as the answer to question 1. Let's say that the requirement is to output to the user that Malaysia does have wild tigers but does not have the highest population of wild tigers. Even though this is an incorrect answer, we still wish to output some feedback to the user. And we must remember to include the appropriate jump statement at the end of our statements implemented following the appropriate case label for the switch statement. Let's implement another switch section, but this time we'll use the default label. And the code implemented for this switch section will be to output the text incorrect answer. We must also insert an appropriate jump statement following the statements for the default case. Again, we'll use the break jump statement. For case and default statements, other jump statements can be applied instead of the break jump statement, namely go to case, go to label, return, or throw. The break jump statement is appropriate in this example. It simply forces the next line of code after the switch code block to execute. The cases in the switch block are evaluated in order from top to bottom. Code within each switch section is mutually exclusive and statements in only one switch section must be run. So now that we have implemented code for our question 1 method, let's implement the code for our application within the main method, which is the entry point of our application. So let's first prompt the user for an answer to the quiz question, what country has the highest population of wild tigers? We then use the console.readline method to retrieve the user's input and assign it to a string variable which we'll name answer. Then let's define an integer named score and initialize its value to the value returned by the question one method. Note that we are passing in the user's input into the question one method through the answer variable. We'll then use the console.writeLine method to output the user's score. Note that we are using string interpolation to merge the value stored in the score integer variable with the string literal showing the user's score status. Then we need to include the console.readkey line of code to ensure that the console screen remains open when running the code interactively through the Visual Studio for Windows IDE. This line of code enables the user to close the screen at the user's discretion by pressing any key. So let's run the code. As you can see, we are being prompted to input the country that has the highest population of wild tigers. Let's first enter a specific incorrect answer. Great, and you can see that the correct switch section was executed and the appropriate output, Malaysia do have wild tigers, but India is the country with the most amount of wild tigers, is outputted to the console screen. Following this, the score is outputted to the screen, which is zero, because we entered an incorrect answer. So let's see what happens when we input the correct answer, India. And the result is as expected. Note that the score integer variable's value was appropriately incremented by one, we scored a point by inputting the correct answer. So let's say a requirement arose where we want to include Russia and Indonesia along with Malaysia as incorrect answers, but because they are valid in the sense that these countries do have wild tigers, we want to give some feedback to the user. So we are able to create more than one case label for a switch section like this. You can see that there are no statements directly after the Malaysia and Russia case labels. We can then write statements following the last case label for the switch section. The case pattern candidate for the last case statement in the switch section is Indonesia. Note that the Malaysia and Russia cases contain no statements, and so we can implement statements for the Indonesia match criteria, and because the two cases directly above this case contain no statements, this means that if the switch match expression matches any of these three match patterns, i.e. Malaysia, Russia, or Indonesia, the statements in the final case label in the switch section will execute. Malaysia, Russia, and Indonesia do have wild tigers, but India is the country with the most amount of wild tigers. And all of these answers are incorrect, but the requirement is to output feedback to the user if any of these three results are inputted by the user. Let's test the code implemented for the new requirement. So let's input Russia for our answer. And the result is as expected. And for good measure, let's test what happens if we input Indonesia as our answer. Again, the result is as expected. 
And let's test what happens if we input a country that definitely does not have any wild tigers. So let's input South Africa. And the default switch statement section is run, outputting the text. In this case, no additional feedback is given, just the fact that the answer is incorrect. This is an expected result. So now let's say another requirement has arisen where we want to give the user extra bonus points if the user answers the first question, i.e., which country has the highest population of wild tigers, correctly, and then answers an additional question correctly. So the additional question put to the user if the user answers the first question correctly is Name the country with the second highest population of wild tigers. So let's create the structure for our nested switch statement. Let's create a switch section for the correct match criteria, which is Russia. And let's add another switch section for the case where the user enters the country with the third highest population of wild tigers. The default part of the nested switch statement will implement code for the case for all other incorrect answers. And let's rationalize our code a little bit so that we are not using magic numbers. Let's create an integer constant, bonus points, and assign this constant a value of two. Let's then update the line of code responsible for adding the bonus points to our score and include the bonus points constant instead of the literal integer value. And you can see that the structure for the nested switch statement is basically the same structure as the parent switch statement. Let's test the code for the new requirement. So let's first enter the correct answer, India. And now we are prompted for the new question, which if we get right, we get bonus points. So I can see the text for the second question is not quite right. For a bonus points should be for bonus points. So we'll have to correct this a bit later. And let's enter the country with the third highest population of wild tigers, Indonesia. And the result is as expected. We only score one point and no bonus points. So let's try again. So we first enter India, the correct answer to the first question. Then for bonus points, we enter the correct answer, the country with the second highest population of wild tigers, which is Russia. And this time we receive two bonus points, so our score is three. So let's correct the text for the second question. For a bonus points should read for bonus points. So let's test another scenario where we answer the first question correctly, then for the bonus point question, we enter a country that does not have any wild tigers. Let's input the country Namibia. And the result is as expected. The default part of the nested switch statement is executed. So we need to create a solution for the last requirement, which is to create a better score status output for the users. So let's create a new private static method named total points scored. This method accepts one parameter, which is an integer that contains the calculated score for the user. This method will not return a value, so we must include the void keyword after the static keyword. So let's create the structure for a switch statement. For the case where the user's score is zero, we'll output the text you scored zero out of three points. For the case where the user scored one point, we'll output the text, you scored one out of three points. For the case where the user scored three points, which means the user scored two bonus points, we'll output the text, you scored three out of three points. So now we want to add some validation code to ensure that a valid score is passed to this method. So to do this, we can implement the when clause in the appropriate case statement. So we can take the match expression in our switch statement as a variable in our switch section and then evaluate it using an expression like this. So this case statement reads that when the value in the score variable is less than zero, execute the code for this switch section. So for this switch section, let's output the text, the score cannot be less than zero. And we can do something similar for the case when the value of the score variable is greater than three. And we can put a catch-all switch section using the default keyword. And in this case, we'll simply output the text invalid score. 
So now we could rationalize the code a bit and combine the case when x is less than 0 or greater than 3 in the appropriate switch section. So we can use the double pipe OR operator for this purpose, and then change the output text appropriately for the code implemented for the switch section. So let's call our total points scored method from the main method. Let's answer the first question correctly, then the second question correctly, so that we can get our bonus points. And the text, you scored 3 out of 3 points is output to the console screen, which is an expected result. So let's test our code again. This time, let's enter the correct answer for the first question. And type Indonesia for our second question. And you scored 1 out of 3 as output to the screen, which is an expected result. So let's force the code to run the switch section when the score is invalid and is either less than 0 or greater than 3. Let's first comment out all the code within the main method except for the console.read key method and add the total point scored method again. And let's plug a literal integer value of minus 1 into the parameter passed to the total point scored method. Great! And now let's plug in a value of 4 as the parameter for the total point scored method. Great! And lastly, we'll plug in a value of 2. Remember only a value of 0, 1 or 3 is valid. So the value in the default part of the switch statement should run. And it does. Great! Note that we have now unit tested our total point scored method. Let's restore the correct application code for the main method. And we have now completed our little quiz application. The code created for this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. Please see the details of the appropriate GitHub repository in the description below. If you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial, please hit the thumbs up icon, it will be greatly appreciated. And please subscribe to support the channel. If you are already subscribed, please smash the bell icon to be notified of future content which will be coming soon. Please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, and please take care.